Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Um, and thank you guys for all your kind words. I'm just getting back in town. I got all your comments, uh, and I appreciate all the well wishes and, uh, again, all the positivity, guys. Seems like uh, I never intended to do a YouTube channel. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a small community here, but the community we have seems to be a great one. Um, again, I appreciate all your positivity. Positivity. Everybody seems respectful to everybody, man, and that's just uh, it's great to hear. Um, you know, crypto has been good to me. I like to get back to the community. That's the entire reason I made this. I don't have a stake in this game. My my goal in this is not for is not to create the greatest YouTube channel ever. I'm just you know a guy that's done well in crypto, and if I can share some of that knowledge, I'm happy to do it. And if you benefit from it, great. And if you think I'm a moron, that's great. It's fine too, man. Uh, whatever you think, whatever you. I mean, I, again, I don't I don't have a uh, you know I I. I I don't have a stake in this game. I really don't. You know, so uh, anyway, I, but I do. I really appreciate the way this community has kind of grown a little bit. Even though we're small, it seems like we've got a great one here, and that's uh, that's great to see. And I certainly do appreciate all your comments. I certainly do appreciate all your tips. When you guys leave a tip in the old tip jar, um, that is wonderful. Never, never feel obligated, by the way, to do that. Uh, but I, I, it is greatly appreciated, guys. Just lets me know I'm doing something right. So anyway, all right, on with the uh, on with the show, so to speak. Here we're looking at Bitcoin to the U.S. dollar four-hour chart. A lot has happened since last time we spoke, guys. Last time we spoke, Bitcoin is operating right below this $11,500 area, guys. That was the uh, 50 from our swing high of 20000 to our swing low of $3,150. That was the 50 fib level, guys. I told you if we did break below, above $12,500, we we're very likely going to find ourselves up at $13,500 very, very quickly. Um, now, I have not changed any of these support and resistance areas, guys, at all, um, with, with one small exception, this $11,500 area, which I am actually, I must have uh, deleted the text by mistake. $11,500 was, was a uh, zone of 11,500 to 11,800. I have just now made that down to 11,500 because I think that's the only thing that's relevant as of right now. In fact, let me go ahead and just add 11,500 very, very quickly. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, get that back up there. Okay. Um, so, and I do feel, I do still think it's relevant. Now, a lot of people are saying on the high, higher time frames, 11,500 was not relevant. It just blew right through it. And yeah, on the higher time frames, it did. But if you're a trader and you're looking at, um, um, traders are often looking, especially uh, scalp and swing traders are often looking at the, or day traders, I should say, are often looking at the smaller time frames. By smile, by, by smaller, I just mean the four hour. I don't mean like the 15 minute or anything like that. But the four hour time frame is extremely relevant. And the four hour time frame did give you a major signal that we were coming up higher. We, we broke up out of this ascending triangle, found resistance right at 11,500, right where we had been talking about. Um, and then we consolidated literally right below 11,500 for 16 hours. And the fact that we consolidated right below 11,500 for 16 hours, and we had one drop back down to 11,000, which immediately got bought and right back up, that was a very, very bullish sign. That was your signal for any of you scalp and, and uh, day traders that we were very likely going to break 11,000 500 and very likely going to come up here to this $13,500 area. And sure enough, that is what happened. Now I do have 12,800 marked off here. Why did I have that marked off? I pointed that out in the past guys, zooming back out here to the daily. That was an area where resistance turned or uh, support turned into resistance. I did think that was a relevant area and it turned out that was a relevant area on the four hour. We did come up here. We had a first test of 12,800 rejected second test of 12,800 rejected, but still a little bit higher. And then on the third test, we broke through. <clears throat> so that was a relevant zone, also a relevant zone on the way back down. The body closed right above 12,800. Then on the next candle, again, another close right at 12,800 before finally breaking down. Um, so that was a very, very relevant zone. Um, I still do think that it is a relevant zone, which I'll explain more later. Um, but on the retest, what do we have? We dropped back down to our area of $11,500 again, found support on top of that area. Basically for the first three passes, we found support on top of that area. So what was resistance turned into support. Why am I pointing that out? I'm pointing that out because this is a very, very relevant zone. If you're a scalp or swing trader, guys, remember you're looking at areas to scalp and swing trade, obviously. So what was resistance often turning to support, it would be a very good area to start stacking and buys if we are looking at a larger correction. And if you did that, you of course had a very, very nice profitable profitable scalp trade from 11.5 all the way up to about 12,800. Now to be fair, I did not take that. I was on vacation with family guys, so I did not trade that. I'd like to tell you that I did, but <laughs> I didn't. Um, but if you did, if you did do that, congratulations. If you didn't do that, don't worry about it. Just make sure you're always watching for these type of things in the future. Um, now on the second pass, every, every other pass after that gets a little more risky. I typically would only trade the first pass. Just, you know, that's my personal preference. You do what you want to do, not financial advice at all. Um, and then we ended up breaking down 
to this prior area of consolidation, which was our prior ascending triangle here. We broke back down, broke back down to the bottom to the bottom of that zone, which is about 10,400. I sent out a uh, message on YouTube on vacation telling you if this did end up breaking down, we'd very likely find ourselves down to at least $9,950, if not this area down here at 9,400. That act that area acted as support for now. We got a nice little bounce off that zone, which again um, is a uh, you know is is. Um, uh, what turned out that uh, 11,500 was relevant. We had support. Support turned into resistance for again about another 12 to 16 hours, and then we broke above it. And we are now trading above 11,500. So I'm going to be watching this zone. Where do we go from here? I'm going to be watching 11,500. I do think if 11,500 breaks down again decisively, by decisively, I mean a four-hour candle opening and closing below 11,500. I do think that we find ourselves down at not not this next area, you know, which was our first pass at at eleven thousand. Um, I think we find ourselves down at at least ten thousand four hundred. I think we're going to come back down and test this area again if we do break below eleven five. I do think we're going to break this uh, t a decisive break below eleven five. I want to be clear, not a wick, but a decisive break below eleven five. I do think there's a very good chance we come back down and test this area again at about eleven uh, ten thousand four hundred. Am I going to be a buyer here? Maybe depends on how we get here. Depends on how um, volume looks and all that good stuff. Um, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Will depend on how it'll look. But uh, you know, again, you have to do what you think is not financial advice. But if ten thousand four hundred does break down, guys, I do think that there's a good chance that we're dropping very quickly down to about nine thousand nine thousand four hundred. I don't think that nine thousand nine hundred and fifty is going to be the next target if 10,400 does break down. I would have thought it on the first pass. I don't think it on the second pass. I do think that we're going to be um, have a lot more momentum to the downside if that does happen. And I do think the next stop would be at least 9,400, where I will add to my long position at 9,400, at least looking for a nice little scalp there um, without question. Now, to the upside, I'm going to be watching 12,800. Again, 12,800 was relevant on the way up. It was relevant on the way down. I do think if, tw and this was the area, of course, we can see that we had a lot of, um, not consolidation, but again, just, just a relevant zone. So I do think if 12,800 does, um, if price does break above 12,800 decisively, not a wick, but a decisive break above 12,800, by decisive, I mean a four-hour open and close, I do think there's a good chance we come back up here and test at least uh, 13,005 again, if not testing our high of 13,850. Pulling out to the daily chart, we can see guys that th this, this correction was the largest correction that we've had since Bitcoin bottomed out at $3,150. Prior to this, the larger correction, larger, large est correction we had was back here, which was about a 21% correction, I think, uh, if, I, if memory serves. Let's see. Yeah, about a 21% correction. That was back here on May the 19th. Um, so far, we've had about a 25% correction. Is that right? 20, yeah, 25.5% correct, uh, percent correction here so far. Um, so this is by far the largest, um, largest correction we've had. This does look, this would make sense that we are topping out here, guys, um, at least temporarily. Again, I, I view this as a healthy pullback. I don't view this. Uh, a lot of people are saying, you know, is this, is, was this, is this just a bear market rally? I don't think so. I think we're getting way too much volume, way too much interest in this market. I think there's a lot of similarities between this and the second wave of the dot-com boom. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I will start to think that if we do break below about 6,500, at that point, I'll start to think that maybe this whole thing was a bear market rally and maybe we haven't bottomed out and maybe we're coming much lower. But until that does happen, guys, I just don't see it. I really don't. Um, I, I, I do think that the bottom is in. That's just my bias. Now, maybe I'll be proven wrong. We'll have to wait and see. But as of right now, I, I would highly, highly, highly doubt that we're going to break below 6,500. In fact, I'd highly doubt that we break below 7,000. Um, and I was going to bring this up later, but I might as well bring it up now. Looking at CMEs, guys, obviously I pointed this out in the past, pointing it out here again. Um, we do have these gaps on CMEs, guys, going all the way down to about 7,200 that would need to get filled. Let me go to the four hours so it, uh, so it becomes a little more pronounced there. There we go. Um, so yeah, we can see we all the way down to about 7,200, guys. We do have these gaps. We have another gap at uh, 8.5 down to 8,870. And of course, our gap here at 10,070 to 10,600. Now, do you think it's a coincidence that we came back down and found support literally right on top of that gap, the top of which is at about $10,600 there? I don't think so. I think that is um, a very, very relevant zone. We'll have to wait and see how this plays out. Now, I do think that this gap is going to eventually get filled one way or another. Um, 
I, I think, uh, and I think that 8,500 will very, very likely get filled one way or another. Now, I, I don't know if that's going to happen on this correction or if that's going to happen two years from now. I don't know. But uh, I do think this gap is going to get filled. I think I think it, we've got a good chance of filling at least this gap here at about $10,070 on this correction here. Before we take, in other words, before we take out um, the high, and actually the high on CMEs was 14.1. But before we take out the high, um, the, this current um, current cycles high, the local high here. Before we take that out, I do think there's a good chance that we come back down and at least fill this gap at about ten thousand seventy dollars. So let's just call it ten thousand. It's good psychological. Doesn't mean it has to happen. Just means that I do think probability uh, does favor a drop back down here. But we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see how this ends up playing out. Okay, so getting back to the daily here, guys. And if I go from our our last major correction, um, which was down back here in uh, in May. Um, so if I go from that correction to our swing high here, we can see that we came back down, hit almost perfectly right there off of the 50. We can also see that the next major area of consolidation was right here at $9,400, just below $9,400, which lines up perfectly with the uh, the golden ratio of the 618. And actually, the, uh, this the 618 to the 65 fib level, also known as the golden pocket, lines up perfectly with this last major area of consolidation back here, um, uh, this this last major ascending triangle right below $9,400. Um, so... That, that is relevant, guys. Again, I'm going to be watching this zone if and when. I'm not saying we're going to come down here, but if we do, this this area, in my opinion, not financial advice, This is in this area is where I will add a fairly significant position, uh, fairly significantly to my position, and I will very likely stack it as price uh, drops here all the way down to and including 8500 which would fill those gaps on CMEs. All right, pulling in here to the four-hour chart, guys. Four-hour uh, looks like... But the uh, eight period EMA did drop below the 21 period EMA, at least for now. Actually, it looks like it's right back on top of it now. Um, we are currently trading above the 21 period EMA for now, um, but uh, does look like it may want to come back down and at least test 11,500 here in the short term. We'll have to wait and see kind of how that plays out. Let's go ahead and check the daily. Uh, daily chart, uh, daily, I mean, the daily chart just doesn't look bad at all. We never did, we, we broke below the eight period EMA, but not decisively. We, in fact, we closed right on top of the eight period EMA, opened right on top of the eight period EMA, and we are trading above it now. So the daily chart does look bullish. Um, uh, I, again, bullish is a relative term. The daily chart doesn't look bad. Um, I'll just, I'll just leave it there. Um, and again, if we can take out about 12,800, which would, which was the close, of uh, two days ago in the open of yesterday's candle, um, I, uh, I do think there's a good chance we continue to the upside. But until that does happen, and just coincidentally or not so coincidentally, as I like to say, that 12,800 is this zone that we've had marked off for quite a long time. So, you know, is that a coincidence? I'll, I'll leave that up for you to say. Um, but if we do close above that, I'll start to get more bullish. As I said, I'll start to think we may come back up and test that 11,000, at least, or excuse me, that at least that $13,500 area. But until that happens, guys, I, you know, it, We'll have to wait and see. Until it happens, it does look like maybe a little bit more consolidation, <clears throat> maybe coming back down and testing and trying to fill those uh, those CME gaps. But overall, on the daily, if we, as long as we, we, may, we maintain ourselves above the 21-day EMA here, as long as we don't get a decisive break below the 21-day EMA, which just coincidentally is, again, or not so coincidentally, is literally right at about uh, 10000 $10, which would basically close that CME gap. So again, we're seeing a lot of confluence between a lot of indicators here, guys. Um, as long as we don't decisively break below the 21-day EMA there, guys, I remain very, very bullish here. I remain very bullish on the larger time frames. Let's go ahead and look at the weekly. <clears throat> And again, by bullish, guys, doesn't mean we can't get a larger correction. I just mean the longer term trend is very bullish. All right, looking at the weekly, yes, we have a very, very long wick here, guys, which would denote a possible top, very, would denote a top. Um, we have put in a top there. Um, but again, the weekly still does look very bullish. We are trading above not only, not only the prior week's close, but the prior week's wick. That is very, very bullish here. So the weekly does look very bullish. We're well above the eight period EMA, EMA on the weekly there, guys. Um, again, we've got um, the eight above the 21, above the 55, still showing some light between, a lot of light between those guys. So again, all that does signal um, a very, very bullish posture for the long term. Let's go ahead and look at the monthly. <clears throat> Pardon me. 
Monthly chart also, again, extremely bullish, did uh, test the top of the um, Bollinger Bands there, got rejected there, as you would expect. Um, but overall, extremely bullish on the monthly, guys. I also want to point out the fact that we do have the monthly here that did um, back here in April was resistance right on top of the 21 period EMA on the monthly. Resistance turned into support and then we took off. Um, that is very relevant because also that is at about 8,500 um, is where that area is. Now, 8,500 is also that next major area below to close those are uh, on CMEs. The next major area to close or below that 10,070 area was that $8,500 area on CME. So again, is that coincidence? I don't know. Um, you know, again, to just it's very interesting to say the least that we're getting a lot of confluence between the CME chart and a lot of our indicators here. All right, checking longs and shorts. Longs just getting wrecked here, as you would expect on the correction. Let's see, that was, uh, yeah, longs got wrecked about a 28%, 29% um, loss in longs there. Let's go ahead and check shorts. Shorts, I would imagine, yeah, shorts are just basically just hanging out, <laughs> holding on for the ride, um, enjoying being in profits there. Um, so we'll have to wait and see kind of how that plays out. But that, I would say that would be, bode a little bit more in favor of the bulls. In other words, we'd have to drive price up to liquidate these shorts. So, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that we wouldn't have to drive price up very high because if you're, I'm, you know, I'm assuming a lot of these shorts are very likely lowering their stop losses um, to, to protect the profits they made. At least I would hope so. Um, so yeah, you wouldn't have to drive price up very high, but it would suggest a spike in price here to try to liquidate some of these shorts. We'll have to wait and see kind of how that plays out. Checking daily volume, daily volume sitting at about, uh, Daily volume sitting about 30, uh, 30.5 billion on the day, guys. That is extremely, extremely bullish. Um, the fact that we're having all this interest flooding into the market long term, that is extremely bullish. Short term, guys, I'm a little bit agnostic on it. In other words, the fact that we have all this, all this volume in the market means that we could see major drops or major rises in price. And I would say right now it does look more like we are in a, a, a corrective phase, if not at least a consolidation phase. Um, so again, that I, I would not, I would not try to pull the trigger on anything unless you caught this drop back here and caught this wick. I would not try to pull the trigger on anything until we drop down to about at least ten thousand four hundred. Um, again, not financial advice. You do what you want to do. Um, just my personal opinion. Could we continue up here and take out twelve thousand eight hundred and then you know come? Yeah, we absolutely could. Is that possible? Yes. Do I think it's probable? I think again, the more probable is that we come back down and at least test eleven thousand, if not this ten thousand four hundred dollar area. And depending on how we react with that, guys, will be very, very, very telling. Um, I do think a break below 10,400. As I said, we find ourselves down at 9,400 very quickly. And this is where I'll be looking to add to my long position at 9,400. And I will add to my long position. If we keep dropping, I'll add to my long position all the way down to and including 8,500. Now, remember, I'm an investor and a trader. So I'll come back down here and add to my long term position, but I'll also very likely scalp these bounces. So in other words, I'll scalp 10,000 or excuse me, 9,400. I'll get out at about 9,900 ish, maybe even a little prior to that. And I'll take my uh, my small profit and uh, and be happy with that. But again, I'll also be adding a little bit to my longer term hold position, guys, and just Again, do just that. Just hold to the long term. And certainly at 8,500, guys, I'll be looking for a, a, a major add to my long term position. Checking our indicators, guys, looking at the daily RSI. Daily RSI is certainly showing a little, um, certainly showing a lot of bearish divergence here. Uh, we do have that local top confirmed, so that bearish divergence has been confirmed. You know, has that ended up playing out? It's possible that it's played out, uh, but uh, that that's pretty nasty. So I don't know that, uh, yeah, I. I uh, it's possible, yes, but I, I, again, I do think that very likely we're going to come back down and at least test 10,400 again. Again, nothing is a certainty, guys. And as long as we're above 11,500, you know, that, again, that's that's that is a sign of strength. But again, we break down below 11,500, and you know, I think we could find ourselves down at 10,400 fairly quickly. Um, yeah, in my opinion, good not financial advice, but uh, yeah. So how am I playing this market, guys? Well, you basically know I've told you every single one of my positions all the way down where I'll be looking, or excuse me, every single area that I'm watching on the way down, where I'll be looking for a bounce, where I'll be looking to buy. Uh, to the upside, you know my target at 12,800. That's when I'll start to get bullish if and when we do get a decisive break above 12.8. By decisive, I mean a four-hour open and close above 12.8. That's when I'll start to get uh, bullish again. I think we may come, be, 
be coming back up to retest this prior high, possibly take it out. Until that happens, guys, it looks to me like it's a watching and waiting game um, and just, you know, waiting for a trade setup. You don't want to force a trade, guys. You just, uh, and I know that's difficult. I do. I, I know that's difficult, especially as a trader, but you don't want to force anything, guys. You want to play this conservative. You want to make, there's going to be plenty of opportunity going forward, more than enough opportunity going forward, guys. And if you don't have any capital to play with, then you can't take advantage of those opportunities. Will you miss some opportunities? Yes. Hindsight is always 2020. but as long as you protect the capital, you, you live to fight another day. And believe me, there are so many more opportunities in the head, in my opinion. Again, not financial advice at all. All right, let me get to some of your comments. All right, looking at some of your comments. And guys, let me know if you enjoy me going through your comments or not. Um, I Again, I, I make this channel for you. Um, if you find it helpful, then by all means, I'll keep doing it. If you don't want me to do it and you just find it boring, then uh, let me know that as well, and I'll stop. All right, looking at some of your comments, 12th Root says, working on my favorite crypto channel, this space definitely needs someone with rational minds, uh, which you are, um, which are you favorite, or which are your favorite alts? Um, I answered that already. Uh, thank you for the comment. I really appreciate that 12 through. I answered some of that, guys. My uh, The alts that I hold, um, my biggest positions are in ETH, or excuse me, are in uh, EOS, Litecoin, Stellar. I know that's a controversial one, but uh, anyway, I've got my reasons. Uh, VET, VeChain, uh, XRP, ETH, Atom, um, which is, um, <coughs> excuse me, guys, I got a drink of water. Okay, sorry about that. Throat was killing me. Um, yeah, Adam, which is Cosmos, uh, BNB, which is, uh, of course, Binance Coin, and uh, uh, BitTorrent, BTT. All right, uh, Workin, you're the star, man. You've been listening to your channel for over a year and extremely grateful for all your sensible advice and rationale. You saved me so much money and stress. Can't thank you. Well, thank you very much, Carl. I love to hear those. I really, really do, man. That gives me momentum to want to make more videos. It really, really does, guys. Um, again, I don't I do not do this. Obviously, I don't do this for the money. I, I barely make anything on these videos. Um, I just kind of do it as a way to get back. So I really appreciate that, man. That makes me feel good. Um, so thank you. Dimitri, uh, man, another nice video. You're always on spot. Uh, question, what are your thoughts on TD Sequential or Elliott Wave? Uh, do use them. TD Sequential, I think, is useful. Um, I, I, I think it's, uh, yeah, I, I do. I think, I think, I, I personally am not, uh, you know, it's not something that I rely on a lot, but I do think it's useful. Um, I'm more of an old school trader, um, but uh, but I do think that's true. Elliott Wave in this market, I'm not a big fan of. I know some people are. I know some people will disagree on that, and I, I'm just not a big fan of Elliott Wave in this market. I reference it. I certainly reference it. Um, you know, at, I mean, for example, right now, I does, it, does this look like after a major five waves up, let me go out to the daily here, on a major five waves up here, does this look like that larger possible ABC correction? You know, do, do, you know, some people are calling this, um, you know, it looks like a, a classic zigzag. Are we looking at something like an ABC? Yeah, that's possible. That's certainly possible there, guys. I just don't put a lot of weight in Elliott Wave right now at the moment. Um, in this market anyway. In traditional markets, I think it's a lot more helpful. In this market, not so much. Now, now that we're getting a lot more volume into the market, could it be a little more useful? It could be. Could be. I'm, I may, I may uh, put in a little more emphasis on it going forward. All right. Uh, Radiant Lunatic says, your analysis helped me navigate the trading space with more confidence. Appreciate how you explain the range of possibilities so we can decide on a course of action, learning a lot here. Thank you very much, Radiant. Really appreciate that. My pleasure. Uh, JK, time for another quick... <laughs> yeah, here it is, JK. Here's the update. Uh, Scott says, I'm so happy to find your channel. My, your, um, uh, you're, you're my girlfriend and I's uh, favorite TA guy. Keep up the good work. P.S. sent you five bat tip. Uh, by the way, uh, would you do a live stream when we hit 20K? Uh, thank you very much, Scott Lee. I really appreciate the tip. I'm glad you and your girlfriend find it helpful. Um, very, very appreciative, man. Thank you very much. Will I do a live stream? You know, I, I've thought about it. I've thought about live streaming and, you know, for security reasons and a lot of other reasons. I've had some serious security issues in the past. Um, I've had people hack my computers. Now, there's no reason to hack my computer. I'm, I'm I'm a, I'm my, the security on, the, on my system is just, is just crazy. I've got completely separate internet connections for my, um, you know, for, for the computer that I use for this versus the computer that I use to trade and everything else. Um, I never mix the two. I never have any cryptocurrency on anything that touches the internet, except very briefly on my own personal computer that doesn't touch anything, but it's own dedicated, um, internet, uh, um, IP address. So, you know, if you were to hack, you could, you could hack the computer that I'm currently on all day long. You could hack the, the IP address that I'm currently on all day long, which, you know, good luck trying to do that. But, you know, I know there are people that certainly could, and you're not going to find anything. You'd be sorely disappointed. Um, but uh, um, my, my point in saying all this is, guys, when, when I live stream, um, it's it's not, uh, I, I tend to say things that uh, that I shouldn't. Um, I, you know, I, I I enjoy my anonymity um, for security reasons, for my family's security reasons, and I just, uh, you know, live streaming, I'm afraid I would say something that I wouldn't want to say. That being said, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Joshua says, thanks, man. You're welcome. Ivan says, good job working. Thank you. I appreciate that. Ivan, Car uh, Cardano Green, thanks, man. Yeah, USDBT is too good. So uh, thanks, Cardano Green. I appreciate that. Payment uh, 21 LLC says, simply the best. Thank you, man. 
I really appreciate that. Don't know if I'm the best at all. I certainly don't think I am, but uh, but I appreciate your support. Uh, Nikolai uh, says, thank you. Can you please look at uh, Litecoin to BCH, uh, to Bitcoin to USD? Uh, Litecoin, uh, Litecoin and BCH to, or, or BCH to Bitcoin. Um, yeah, I can look at that real quick. And I'm not going to do a major analysis on Litecoin, but very, very quickly, sure. Uh, looking at Litecoin, guys, obviously you would expect a major breakdown uh, following uh, Bitcoin's lead here. Broke below uh, uh, 118, came back down, tested our 110, um, and yeah, finding support on 110. So yeah, it does look like trading range right now between 118 and 110. Um, I would say if it breaks below 110, I think it's going to be a very quick drop down to about uh, $100. Am I a buyer at 100? I, I might pick up a little bit at 100, actually. Um, we'll have to wait and see kind of how that plays out. To the upside, if we do break the site, Decisively, uh, but I, let me go to the four hour actually. Let me uh, look at the smaller time frame. Yeah, if we get a four hour open and close below 110, I think it'll be a quick drop to at least $100 there. Um, and I might be a buyer at 100. I'm watching this larger ascending support line that's been in place for quite some time. I would definitely be a buyer at that point. Um, but yeah, I might pick some up at $100. If we get an uh, open and close above 118, a four hour open and close above 118, we're currently at about 119 now. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, if we get a four hour open and close, oh man. Um, I don't know. Cause actually that's, it's, I, I don't even know that this 118 is right. Looking at these wicks, I, I do think that's a little bit higher than that. And sorry, I, I hate to adjust on the fly like that. I really, really do guys. I, I feel like it's unfair, but, uh, it, it's, it, I, 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 I screwed up that target. That target should be about 120. Just looking at those wicks. Um, so yeah, looking at if we get a, if we get a daily candle opening and closing above about 120, I would say that uh, very likely we're going to rise up to at least about 130, maybe 130, 132 ish, um, somewhere thereabouts. If we get a daily opening and close above 120. Um, so yeah, those are my two uh, those are my two thoughts on Litecoin. Uh, what else did you want? What else did you say you wanted was uh, uh, BCH to Bitcoin. All right, quickly looking at BCH to Bitcoin, um, very, very quickly. It looks to me like it wants to drop back down to about, what is that, uh, 3,299,000, call it 3,300,000 uh, Satoshi, somewhere thereabouts. Yeah, it looks to me like it wants to continue down to that uh, to that level. Uh, yeah, about 3,200,000 and, or excuse me, 3,300,000 Satoshi. Um, from there, uh, would I be a buyer there? Yeah, I, I, yeah I mean, that's, not, that's not a bad area to buy, I, I would say. Uh, it looks like a decent area of support there. Overall, um, I, I think overall, though, most of the alts to Bitcoin are looking fairly bearish at the moment. Um, I would say if we can get a bounce off of that zone and if we can close above uh, 4,350,000 Satoshi, if we can close above that area, I do think that it'd be a very quick rise to about 5,400,000 Satoshi, and I'd have to reevaluate at that point. Okay, moving on. Uh, Robert Turner says, not that much resistance around uh, 11.5 to 11.7. Uh, if we think the last bull bear market was only retail investors, you can forget about the previous resistance and support levels. That was all based on FUD and FOMO. Yeah, I respectfully disagree. I think those relevant, those areas are relevant. I think we pointed out the fact that that area was relevant on the way back up, zooming in here to the four hour. In fact, they gave, that gave you, this gave you right here a huge signal that we were about to break out the fact that we consolidated right below that 11.5 that 50 fib level for literally 16 hours before breaking out there and then of course we hit that fib level almost perfectly at that golden pocket between the 618 and the 6.5 right at there that $13,500 area at the uh, 13,000 uh, we topped out at 13,008 and then rejected hard off of that zone that was right inside that golden pocket um, so uh, yeah I'd respectfully disagree on that but I mean I understand you're looking at the higher time frames it looks like it just busted right through um, and you're right about the fact that those were those were a lot of retail investors getting in back then and we're seeing a lot of smart money come in so you're, you're absolutely right about that there's no question about it but to say that the the rest of the uh, resistance support are completely irrelevant I just I, I, don't, I don't agree with that but uh, respectfully I respectfully don't agree with that all right JK uh, who could miss your last videos man impossible <laughs> that's crazy but by the time you post your videos big is up 15.5 yeah it really was what if December 17th was wave one December 18th wave two and now we're in wave three that would be something um, although you know that that really that goes into all wave and you have to remember guys that is I don't want to get you know too far into this but uh, you know if I go into if, let me just look at the weekly if I throw on log scale you know if you're looking at Elliott wave you've really got to do it through the whole picture looking at log scale and if we put on log scale and I go back to uh, now let's get bitstamp because it gives you a little bit more history even though it doesn't even give you the full history of Bitcoin um, you know that that came off a massive spike where we start here 
in uh, what is that 2011 August of 2011 and we were in a downtrend there so presumably that was already wave one you know you could call that a wave two you could call this wave three you could call this wave four and you could call the twenty thousand dollar the top of wave five and then we'd be on an ABC correction or you could view that completely differently and you could say as you said that we had five waves up already this was our ABC correction and then of course as you said this was our wave one going into wave two and up for wave three. This is why I don't, Elliott Wave, you know, it's, it's, it's great in a market that has 10 plus years of, uh, of, of solid trading, but this is only, this, this market is 10 years old and just now we're starting to see smart money enter the market. So I don't know that Elliott Wave, at least it's trying to check its prior history, I don't know that Elliott Wave is going to be that accurate in this market. Um, we'll have to wait and see. And certainly looking at this, guys, looking at this approaching this $20,000 top, this is going to be extremely telling to see how we react at that level. But your point is very well taken, JK. You're absolutely right. I mean, things are getting things are getting a little bit crazy. It'll be very interesting. All right, George says, hi there. Question from someone new to crypto. It seems to me that a lot of TA that works well on traditional assets um, is completely ignored in BTC. It looks like only triangles and some SNR uh, support and resistance work so far, at least since I'm watching it since uh, December of 2018. What's your view on this? I would agree. I would agree. In fact, that goes back to the Elliott Wave thing, guys. I think Elliott Wave works fairly well in traditional markets, not so well in crypto um, for a lot of reasons you know especially given that this market is just now starting to get validated with smart money um you know which typically is when elliott wave will start to have some relevancy um but uh but i, I disagree that it's only looking at uh, only looking at triangles and support and resistance i think there are some other things that work well obviously fib levels work very very well um you know basic support and resistance but um, but, uh um, i do think the rsi plays a very very critical role um macd has it has its role i do think uh, moving averages exponential moving averages bulger bands all play their role in this market Market. But your point is taken. Certainly, some things that work well in traditional markets don't necessarily translate over to crypto. All right, Earl says, thank you for your accuracy and non-biased recommendations. Best in the market so far, as far as I'm concerned. Question, do you have an email address so I can email you some private questions about how to join, um, how to join and what you have to offer as far as daily trades? I don't have any, um, I don't have a group to join. I mean, you're, you're already part of the group. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you're part of the group. Um, I don't have a, I, I don't really believe so much in uh, trading signals. Um, and I'm, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't want to ever give financial advice in that way. Um, I just kind of share you my experience and, uh, and move on that way. But thank you very, very much for your recommendations. You can always direct message me on Twitter. If you're a follower of mine on Twitter, I will very likely follow you back. And if I do, then you can send me direct messages. Um, so you can also find me on Facebook. Um, again, I, I, I don't have, you know, I, I'm very, very small, guys. I did not expect, I didn't expect to really, um, have much of a following at all. And I, I, I'm still very, very small. Um, certainly on Twitter, I'm very, very small. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to follow me on, on uh, Twitter, I'll usually follow you back and uh, feel free to send me a direct message. And if I'm not following you, it's not because I don't want to. It's usually just because I, uh, I, I just don't pay that much attention. But if you send me a tweet, I'll get the tweet. And uh, if you have something, if you want to let me know that you want to send me a direct message on Twitter um, and I haven't followed you, just send me a tweet that you want to send me a direct message and I'll make sure to follow you. All right, Simple Auto, best crypto channel. Uh, thank you, man, uh, for all your work. Question, why don't you do alt charts instead of BTC? Um, I, I basically, I don't do that because I do think that alts are starting to, uh, we're getting some split. I don't think it's going to be the same alt season that we had in 2017. I, I think a lot of alts are going to start dying away. And I do think that the alts that start to, uh, that remain in this market are going to split somewhat from BTC here eventually. Um, I don't think it's going to be the same way in 2017. And I think I said this before, we could basically throw an alt or throw a dart at any alt on the board and you would make, you know, 100 X. I don't think it's going to be that way. I think the bar is a little bit higher. Um, and I just think that, uh, I, I think that it's, it's a little bit cleaner, especially for those of you that are new that for the higher market cap alts, which is typically what I do, I'll do, uh, I do to the, uh, to the dollar and for the lower market cap alts, it's really, I only do bat really for that. Um, and I don't even know that it depends on what you mean by lower market cap, but that I do use BTC on. But uh, but for the most part, I just like to keep things clean. And I think that keeps it a little bit cleaner. I know I know the argument for BTC. I do. I, I get it. Um, and who knows if, if more people ask for that, maybe I'll switch over and start doing that. But I just think it's cleaner. And with I do think that eventually they're going to split from BTC. I think we're seeing signs of that now. And when it does, I do think it's just going to be a lot easier to uh, to paint these things with reference to uh, to to USD.
and yes, I get the argument that you might as well just hold BTC if it's not. I, I get that. I don't know that I subscribe to that very well, but I do get it. All right. Uh, Zhang Wei says, not expecting a major con uh, correction until 16K to 17K. Uh, with Bitfinex going offline, expecting all those shorts on Bitfinex to be liquidated. They've been underwater for a while. Won't take them. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we saw the major correction now. Uh, let's see, with Bitfinex come online, causing uh, the push to probably 14K. We did get close to 14K, did on CME, so you're right about that. Then FOMO kicks in. We, we did not have the FOMO kick in. We had the larger correction start at that 14K. Um, but, I mean, I, I get your rationale with that. All right, 880 says, great analysis work, and you provide solid advice. Um, take notes, subscribers. Also, fellow subs, stop obsessing with fork coins like Bitcoin Colt and all that. Okay, hey, thanks for the support, 880. I appreciate that. Uh, 12th Root got another one in, uh, Ben. How, yes, it is been crazy and frank loved the video one question btc pullback incoming um and yeah i, I think you put this out when we were at 11.5 and of course uh, we we went up to 13.5 and then started that larger uh incoming pullback um, as you suggested all right let me quickly go look at some of these other questions uh do we have any in the community section uh have a great trip thank you appreciate that spot on uh man dark ta going to now unreal yeah it's been crazy uh btc say we're going to continue for topping out for any building support again yes it is uh any questions here thanks for the update you're welcome uh don't worry about it <laughs> i appreciate that doug no apology uh valuable knowledge group says is there the possibility of huge retracement not only a zigzag or there is a possibility of huge retracement not only a zigzag um let's not forget that we were in an uptrend in a bear market of only 11 months bear is far too short to be over don't you think working um well, I mean, I, I kind of would disagree with that. I think the bear market started in the end of 2017 and went till uh, basically January, really the end of December. Of uh, So really it was about, I mean, you could say 11 months, 12 months, whatever you want to say, about a year bear market. Do I think that's too short? Um, I know you're comparing that to prior bear markets where they were much longer and you're right about that. I, I do think though the fact that we have so much more volume coming into this market, um, I mean, way, way, way more, I think you would agree, far, far more volume than we had back then, that things are moving a lot quicker given the fact that we have smart money coming in, starting to come in, um, and we have a lot more volume starting to come in. I think that's speeding things up. So do I think that this is basically um, a, uh, a a bear market rally? No, I don't. Now, am I, could I be wrong about that? Of course I could be wrong about that. And as I said, if we do break down below 6,500, I'll start to believe that I was wrong about that. But until that does happen, I do think that this is just a uh, a, a healthy correction and I will likely add to my uh, to my long position on the pullback there. Um, and what she means by zigzag there, guys, she's referring to an Elliott Wave zigzag correction, ABC correction for those of you that are not Elliott traders. Um, so that's just, I uh, just want to make sure we're clear about that. So, uh, but I appreciate you always stopping by. Um, it, it, uh, it, uh, I do appreciate your support there, Valuable Knowledge Group. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. As always, we appreciate an upvote if you have enjoyed this content. Until next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing out.